another cervix here. By now, we are really, really good at diagnosing uh, squamous cell carcinoma in situ because this is obviously what we have here. We have no maturation from the base to the surface. Instead, all the cells are dark, irregular cells, very much with a high mitotic rate, pleomorphic, hyperchromatic, classical appearance for squamous cell carcinoma in situ, in which this area at the base looks no different from this at all. Plus, there, you won't have a hard time finding cells in which the mitoses, like here and here, appear to be going in uh, at maybe two or three or four different directions, which is about as close to a diagnostic cytologic feature of malignancy as you could get. Please also notice that uh, the endocervical glands are also involved with this carcinoma in situ. But there's an extremely important differentiation to be made here. Whereas you know that these are endocervical glands, because like these normal endocervical glands, they seem to be right underneath the mucosa. Please note as we travel along, there are areas of tumor that do not appear to be nice and contained within these endocervical glands. This is a really good example. Here's an endocervical gland lined by columnar epithelium, but it has carcinoma in situ within it. On the other hand, this structure here has absolutely no semblance of a gland at all. It's very irregular. It goes out into the stroma. This is infiltrating squamous cell carcinoma as compared to squamous cell carcinoma in situ here, which is uh, still has not infiltrated other than the fact that it's involving a gland. But all of this stuff out here has infiltrated. Thank you very much.